How do you want the everyday basketball fan to view the WNBA? Badass, right? <laughs> do you have to say that LeBron is a male basketball player? Like, I don't understand why we have to do that. It felt like so much of my life was hidden from even members of my family. I'm on my way to DC to link up with Washington Mystics forward Elena Deladon. Bouncing back from an injury, she has a lot to prove this season. But she's already proving why more people need to take notice of the WNBA. Hello. We gotta do like a side by side. Gosh. We're old now? Yeah, what happened to us? <laughs> 19 for 19. And no one has been better in the history of the league. You have been called the best free throw shooter <laughs> in pro basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Are you the best free throw shooter in pro basketball? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> maybe, but um, I think you know. Like, the it's, it's not a title I like take. Um, yeah. I just know that I have kind of just figured out what works for me, and the simplicity of the shot, and not letting my mind get too involved because free throw shooting is so mental. So, what does work for you when it comes to shooting free throws? Maybe. Making it the same and keeping it very simple. So, like. I literally get a 90 degree angle with my arm and then lift and flick, and that's really it. You'll see players like get up there and spin the ball or like put it behind their back or between their legs. And when you do that, so much can go wrong. Like you will be thinking about that when you take your shot, and that's just your routine. Like, why should your routine affect the shot? Just whoa. Oh, whoa. It was oh, whoa. right. Oh, my goodness. Which do you prefer to be described as? Basketball player or female basketball player? Basketball player. Do you have to say that LeBron is a male basketball player? Like, I don't understand why we have to do that. Like, mm -hmm. we're basketball players, we play basketball. How do you want the everyday basketball fan to view the WNBA? Badass, right? <laughs> Badass basketball. Badass basketball. <laughs> How does the everyday basketball fan view the WNBA? I think the true fan or someone who has played basketball and truly knows the game loves it. I mean, you hear the NBA guys talk about it. They watch our games, they study our games to learn stuff from us. It's those high school has-beens that think they can still play and for some reason hate that females might be better than them at something. Um, they're the ones who struggle to jump on board. When someone says that women's basketball is fundamental basketball, mm -hmm. how do you view that term? <laughs> fundamental, that word just is a little boring. It's almost like they're kind of just simplifying our game and saying like, it's very fundamental and you know, it's way different than the NBA. Like we can't just jump over people and dunk. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times we have to get to the rim and get real creative and all different finishes. So the game is different, but I don't think there needs to be that comparison all the time. And even just the small little naysayers who are constantly like on us, like go back to the kitchen, go back to the kitchen. What is it with the kitchen? Like what is the kitchen <laughs> comment? Like, what time <laughs> I are can't we cook. living in yeah. and I can't eat yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least say order Postmates or something. Right. Like, it's More accurate. Not, <laughs> yeah. You talked about the marketing of WNBA players, and I know that last year you called out Adam Silver for not investing enough marketing dollars into the game. You can't make a business plan 20 years ago and keep it the same for 20 years. You know, it's gotta change as the times have changed, and now is the time where, you know, women are at the forefront of so much, and women are so powerful and motivational, so I think the W can be something that women can look to for that inspiration. There's this idea, though, that if we talk about anything that has to do with a woman, we almost do it in comparison to a man. I, that's like something I've always struggled with. There's been so many NBA guys talking about the WNBA, and it's frustrating that they have to talk about it for us to be legit. 
and people do listen when they talk. And unfortunately, people aren't listening as much as when we talk. Why can't we just be heard? What NBA players really do support the league? I mean, LeBron, even during our playoffs, like I was able to meet up with him because I was doing the barbershop. And he was just like spitting out stats and all this stuff, like in this game, at this minute, why did this happen? You need to do this, you need to speak up. Like, it was great. <laughs> yeah. And it was just like, normal basketball talk and I was like okay like you truly watch what does gender equity look like in the WNBA we're not asking for NBA money we know that our league is not generating the dollars that the NBA is but we do deserve more than we get the more and more we get marketing dollars behind it, we get to be on TV more. That's when we can continue to grow and salaries will continue to grow. So for someone who says, okay, well maybe you guys don't get enough because not enough people watch, mm -hmm. what would your response be to that? The WNBA playoffs were on ESPN News. So like, who's really able to watch? Like I've always said the WNBA fans are probably the most loyal fans there are because you have to be able to sign up for League Pass to be able to watch most of the games or follow your favorite team. Or like, say you want to buy a hat. A lot, a lot of times there's one hat you can choose from. Like you can't rock really cool hats. That has to be so frustrating. You see when you talk about it, you're like, and they can't, they don't even have a hat. They can't, yeah, they yeah. can't even get a hat. Yeah. <laughs> or like they can't even get a kid sized jersey at times. That's the stuff that's frustrating. But I, I have seen a little bit more of a shift with the Women's World Cup coming up. Like there's a lot that is about to happen this summer. How did it feel for you to see like all the Women's World Cup stuff and the soccer players mm -hmm. saying, okay, we're gonna take a stand against this? Yeah, it's inspiring to everybody else looking up to them and seeing like, you know, this is wrong. Like, let's fix it. They just had the game where they wore a female that inspires them. Beyonce was on a jersey, like Lord was on a jersey, and then there was Deladon. I was like, wow, like, this is pretty cool. If you were to wear a jersey, whose name would you put on the back? I think Pink. She's just constantly spoke her mind and done what's right. And even if it has hurt her at times, like she didn't care. She always just kind of did the right thing. And she's just so powerful and so important to women. So you live in DC. You can't really get away from the politics mm -hmm. being here. Has being in this environment forced you to be less silent about political things that you feel matter? I think just what's going on in politics right now has forced me to really try to speak up. Who we have in office is a little frightening at the moment, what's going on, and just, I don't know, the hatred that is being brought up is scary to me. Yeah. We've got to speak up, and I know it gets tiring every day, something new to kind of say, no, stop, this is wrong. Um, but we kind of just got to keep pushing. Uh, you've been in the news a couple times. You've had a disagreement with Adam Silver. You wrote a book. <laughs> what inspired you to just be more vocal? Truly just meeting Amanda, my wife, made me feel at home. And she's just helped me grow up and kind of just be who I am and not be apologetic about it. When you first meet her, she like comes off as like very serious. Sometimes she'll have I don't know if I should say this, but like that resting bitch face. <laughs> you can Where, say it. Okay, the resting bitch face. Yeah. But she truly has one of the biggest hearts I've ever seen. And for those she cares about, she goes above and beyond. Like she runs all my businesses. She, She's doing the renovations. So tell me what that process has been like. Oh, that's <laughs> been uh, quite fun. So we, we decided to buy this house and we knew it was gonna take some like fixing. Basically, Amanda kind of had the vision. She was all over Pinterest and was like, do you like this, do you like this? It's like, yes, yes. And worked with the contractor to get it done. Now, Amanda, your wife told me you are the boss. You are in control. So I want to know what it's been like to lose control of your house for all these months. It's terrible. We're living yeah. in our basement with our two dogs. And yeah. they're not small dogs, so there's that. And I'd like to think you put in some I said you would show me Pinterest, and then I'd say yes it's or no. That yeah. was the process. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes or it's no. It's simple. <laughs> it was really amazing to hear Elena talk about you. Well, I said I was the goofy one, and you're the dry humor. Yeah, one. you're weird. It's not a bad thing. I think it's great to be weird. Actually, people don't really know her. I think they've gotten to know you better through Instagram, because I would love just recording uh, her yeah. so people can see what she's really like, because she's weird. <laughs> I think you're funnier. For sure. Thank you. I'll take that one. Growing up and being 
a lesbian and not really understanding what was going on, not really having a role model to look to, and um, just feeling like I had to keep that hidden was really tough. It felt like so much of my life was hidden from even members of my family. And then when I met Amanda, it just all kind of changed. Cheers to the Della Dance. We do a segment with every guest. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you about a time or a moment you're gonna take me to that time or moment. Okay. okay. Yeah. Alrighty, take me to when you met your dog. Oh, I was in Chicago and the breeder brought him. He got out of the little car and he's like flopping around. His ears were huge, his paws were huge. It was love at first sight. What do you do? Come here. Come here, go Come here. You the boy. Take me to your TV guilty pleasure. Okay, so I love How to Get Away with Murder, yes. but then I love MTV The Challenge. So I think that's <laughs> definitely my biggest guilty pleasure. You're a Shonda Rhimes fan, because when we first met, we were talking oh. about how much we love Scandal. Exactly. Yeah. Anything Shonda's got out, I'm for it. Take me to the time you realized, hey, I'm tall. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and when I came out of the womb? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I think when I like, was in school and we started doing like school plays. You know how you do like one a year? And like I was always in the back row for singing parts with like all the tall boys and then me. Um, and then even like when we could watch the videos back and like watch what we were doing and the dances, I was like, my goodness, I am really tall. Now you mentioned some accommodations with the house because you yeah. are a tall person. This light, <laughs> tell me about the light. So this used to be like a drop down light. And like right when I first came into the house, it was like, pew, I would have knocked myself out. So I'm not gonna get concussed walking into my home anymore. Perfect. Lots yeah. of stuff's happening in here. We've got paint. <laughs> Did you guys ever think about doing the painting yourself? It's simple, but it's a headache and it's tedious. Yeah. yeah. When you paint yourself, you see all the things that like you didn't do perfectly. Mm -hmm. We're like, I don't see that and I'm sure they paint better than I do. Oh yeah, so. I think we can leave it to the professionals. Yeah, right? and just let them do that too. <laughs> so now that you feel you have found your voice, mm -hmm. what do you want people to hear? I want females to be empowered and to be strong. And if I can say something to inspire, you know, the next coming up, then I've done my job. And if I just, you know, kept going the way I first started the game where I was just like, just Elena the basketball player, I don't have opinions. That wasn't doing me any uh, good and it wasn't doing anyone else good. So I wanna leave this game better than I came into it and hopefully inspire uh, the young ones to speak their mind and keep pushing. Find the good light. The right angle. Seeker, you know I do. Okay. Just wrapped up with Elena Deladon, which that's such a great name. Thank you. Like, it's Italian? It is. Okay, it so is. how do we say it like? Deladone. Deladone. <laughs>